We'll start with our first one, which is kind of the easiest, and yet it is so nice in that it can uh, accommodate STEM, STEAM concepts as well. Um, seemingly simple, but I'll give you guys some more uh, information. Let me take, try to take you through the logistics first. Okay, in your lesson, they all come with a binder, right? They all come in this box. Um, everything's nicely uh, sorted and organized for you. Um, there's a binder inside each of one. We uh, put in a workshop participant tracking. So please, if you can fill in your workshop location, see over here, um, the date and the number of uh, participants or students and who taught the class. That would be awesome if you can do that for us and we can um, get some of that information back. And the reason we're allowed to know is because these are going to be moving around Santa Clara County and it also um, is for our tracking that we report to Power Cycle. We encourage you to read through the entire lesson plan. There are no longer than three pages um, uh, to get the lesson description of how it applies to a STEAM concept um, and the goal and objective of the, of the craft. All of these come with the concept of four R's in mind. So for this one, um, we have a, you know um, some additional information. We would, if you want to touch on the four R's concept about this, we decided obsolescence is a great one since we're using old CDs, mm -hmm. right? So um, you know you can ask the students what they know about obsolescence, if they know about planned obsolescence, and how planned obsolescence affects our environment, right? So those are some conversation starters with them. Um, the directions to make the actual item are always going to be in here as well. And these are, there will be copies of this that you can pass out, but you know, get back um, and put in here. Um, for these spinners, we uh, decided to go with optical illusions, right? As far as teams, because these, these are for teams, right? These are usually, of course, very easy to do for the littles, but we really wanted to adapt this to um, the teens as well. So we focused on optical illusions. There's gonna be templates that they can color. Um, if you guys want to color some yourself or, or print out some pretty cool ones that you've seen, I'll show you the ones that I printed out. Um, there's a tiny optical illusion explainer, right? Definition. And then there's some optical illusion color and light plate guides that they can look at for ideas. Um, and I'll show you the little, that little trick in a minute. Um, okay. This one here, let's go through the supplies that are in here. So these will all be in the binder. The templates, there's some in the binder already. So you don't have to, you know, definitely check and make sure that there's enough copies for your participants. If not, um, you'll be able to run those copies yourself. Um, the templates. Inside of this one, we have all the coloring materials. Um, we have, you know, some scratch paper um, that they can then uh, trace their circle and cut out their shape with that they're going to color. This one also comes with cordless glue guns, which are the coolest. <laughs> um, coolest to clever, I hate these. Um, but they do have to be charged for three hours in advance and they are with uh, the USB. So you'll need that outlet. And this one in particular does have one in here. So there is one uh, double charger, um, but you'll probably need another. Uh, or I don't know. They actually have two ports. Uh -huh. So there's only two. Oh, there's only two. That's the okay. kits, um, kit. So you should have enough for. That's right. Because each participant kits. won't need their own. So yeah. just two will be enough for this. Um, for this one, if you have a connection with RAF or if you want to ask your participants to bring in a reuse material, the reuse material that they can bring in for these are bottle caps and any old CDs lying around the house. So those are the two reuse materials for this kit. Um, am I forgetting anything, Colette? 
Do you want to show off this? Oh, I will in a second. <laughs> <laughs> we were testing this yesterday. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, light. Uh, again, very simple, right? We have two types of spinning devices, and they seem very simple. This is one of the oldest toys. These are some of the oldest toys mm -hmm. we have, as far as human beings are concerned, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if you guys got to read the link I sent in the prior one about the Stanford researchers taking this to make the lab, the medical grade equipment to be used where there's no power, right? Yeah. Which I thought was the coolest. Um, so definitely, please highlight that work. You know, um, with with something like this, um, bring attention to that. There's also an app you can download, which I put in. Um, but this is, you know, I'm sure, have you played with this before? Okay. Do you want to it? Oh gosh, here you do that. Okay, so <laughs> this one is super easy. Oh, here, I'll show you. This one's a fun one actually with this color change right here. So with this one, you want the CD in the middle um, and then you just power it up and you get it to the point where now you're going to be able to spin it, right? And here's where you can talk about concepts of rotations per minute. How could I make this more efficient? This is what the Stanford researchers did, you know, with this very simple toy. They started thinking about the power, the, you know, the, the properties that were happening, the physics properties, right? Um, and the centrifugal force more than anything, right? And then they went through this whole process of taking this toy and finding its optimum spin and to get the fastest, um, you know, to get it to that point where they can separate blood cells out or whatever else they're doing. You, you'll have to recap With that, the right? Your platelets, right? Yeah. The what? Your platelets? The, the oh, platelets. yes, yes. I'm not quite sure what, oh, this one right here, I think you can use with the, the strobe app. So there's an app you can download, um, it's a strobe light. And um, some of these, if, if you want to go into like the animation realm, um, if you dark, like if you go into that room over there and shine the strobe on it, you can um, get it, you play with the strobe speed until you get it to where you can find the animation. Mm -hmm. So that's fun with this one. And of course, both of those you can do with the spinner or with this. With the spinner, it's fun because you can just you know, get it to where you just replace it with many. So it doesn't have to be just one that's glued. And that way they can play with a lot of different optical illusions on the spinner. This one comes with the marbles. Let me show you the app real quick. The app is just called Strobe Light Tachometer. And it's you know, you turn it on, or if you can see the little light right there, and you play with the, the uh, RPMs. That's how I make. There's different ways you can play with that. I don't know too much about this guy, so there's just, I just thought it was pretty cool. I don't know, but I don't know too much about the technical aspects of it. Um, can certainly try to research more before we totally hand this all off to you. Um, but that's that. Any questions? I hope this gives a little bit more interest to the CD spinner. <laughs> 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 then just the intention is though that yeah, we provide the CDs and the bottle caps. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And, and then yeah. everything else. Oh, which is actually is great. Oh yeah, we can give you some string. Oh, yeah. um, I mean, you don't have to. And on. we have yeah. bottle caps and CDs, but we want to get the students to kind of look in their environment. Right. Hey, yeah. Can I not throw away? And use for this experiment. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, so, uh, categorize these is that there's general supplies which you can replace yourself and then there's unique supplies which if you don't have them please give us a call you know and, and we'll uh, replace them for you um, and then the instruction guide of what comes as far as like the resources and directions and templates and there's also 
um, just a like a one hour breakdown of how you can possibly go about it so that you can do it within an hour. How long are these going to be? They're going to be about, about, about an hour, hour right? right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. The, the CD spinner activity I've done in the past has been a good like shady, like we need to be in the shade but outside somewhere for a little bit um, because like there's so few supplies and it's really fun to play with like the different amounts of light outside. It can be really fun to like see what's going on and then give Everybody students like a, a turn because it's part of your training. <laughs> <laughs> Our house and collector these kits with uh, like the game in the sense of like here are the materials you're gonna be working with, where do you think it comes from and where do you think it's gonna end up? Yeah, I don't think we've done that before, but mm -hmm. it's a great way to share that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And to show cohesion between the activities too, right? Like yeah. we're well, I'll tell you what one thing that um before the pandemic, um at the makerspace with the Office of Ed, the person that was at that point in charge, she was really trying to focus on um, projects where the disassembly, right, was a big part. How can we create something innovative, but at the same time that doesn't end up in the trash once we created it, right? How can we um, use these materials? Because you know, makerspaces, right? A lot of hot glue, a lot of glitter, and everything goes in the trash after. So like, yeah, how do we design projects that the kids can explore same yeah. concepts with, but that don't, but that disassemble and we can use, reuse those materials again. Yeah. Actually, this reminds me, there is a note in the lesson plan. Um, let's say you have a blue stick that's no longer using. These are very easily. Um, don't throw it away. We can use the caps for one of our bottle cap projects. Mm -hmm. um, we also have places we could recycle markers or reuse them in different ways. So um, encouraging not to throw away anything and you can always give it back to us. We'll eventually get these back at the end of summer. Um, the general supplies, there's enough for two workshops in each kit. Um, and Shantae, we're building out another mm -hmm. set. So it'll meet the needs of all the branches. Um, and then for how yeah. many people is like, this one is for 20 students for CD spinner, um, but, but they do vary. Um, and it really has to do with kind of monitoring like the hot glue guns or having the ball caps and, and shapes for each of the um, workshops. But this I think has our most, our biggest capacity for 20 students. And a lot of them are shared materials. Like obviously there's not a glue gun for every student. That'd be fun for them, nightmare for us. Um, so yeah. We're, we're also thinking about seeing how it does with your audience and if maybe there's room to add more supplies for workshop. We would love that feedback. Um, and we also encourage you to take photos of the workshops, not necessarily the students, but say you're taking a photo of them working with the materials, you can send that to us and that'd be really great for our outreach as well. Oh, and I was just thinking too about the CD spinner. Um, you can play with the string, tell, tell them they can play with the string length. Right, oh, like yeah. maybe like a shorter, maybe a longer. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you get it faster? Um, there is a tool that that is available that measures RPMs, or if you know how to do the app for that, like that would be another way to play. Like you film it on slow mo, right, mm -hmm. and count and then multiply that out. Um, if any of you know a way uh, or a little contraptions to that you can do on hand spinners to make the best, you know that toy that was out? Oh yeah, like, right. oh my gosh, uh, yeah. Bay like, blades. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, oh, I need to do some bay blades, like research. How do you make DIY bay blades, right? So that you can make this spin faster. And so there's some idea, other ideas to take it. Yeah. yeah. So that's that one. Do we need a quick break? Yeah. Well, I'm sorry.